Hello and welcome to E Play Presumes Fireside Chats. Not as good as FDRs, but hey, it's something. Now this episode is. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll just say this: I was originally planning on doing someone else this episode, but I decided against it for one reason that I don't think I can say. I mean, I'm not. I mean, it's. I can say it if I wanted to, but I don't want to. But I'm just saying. I would probably have preferred to have something like, like, it's basically would burn a bridge that I don't want to be burned at this particular moment. So I decided to do a figure that would be a whole lot less controversial to talk about. Now you might say, this is less controversial? Well yeah, because everybody can agree that she sucks. The other person that I was going to do, not a lot of people are on that viewpoint. So we'll, we'll see how things play out. So let's get right into the news. I don't think we need to beat around the bush and we're going to talk about the big thing first. Afghanistan has fallen. So, yeah, I mean, it's been in the news for literally the whole week. It happened literally while I was on vacation. Like, at the final day of vacation, it was literally like, oh yeah, Afghanistan has fallen. Uh oh. And a lot of things have been happening because of it. So first of all, let me explain. Like Taliban took over because that was the plan the whole time. They took over Afghanistan and well, there's a lot of indications that things are going to go back to a lot more strict conservative Islamic rhetoric, which is not a good thing. And as such, a lot of people have been trying to leave Afghanistan and a video got very prominent because there was a plane that was leaving Afghanistan and there were tons of refugees like climbing on the plane like desperately begging like please let us on let us on and then one of the planes took off and there were people still hanging on the side and a couple of them dropped and let like they fell to their deaths and that's a very bad thing and there's been a lot of talk a lot of talk in regards to this instance like not just the plane falling but like the Afghanistan period like there's been a lot of talk like what the heck does this mean for like the broader Afghanistan policy do people adapt the policy who do we blame blah 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 you know all this stuff who was right in the end of the day all this jazz basically here are my big takeaways from all this a takeover was bound to happen. If it wasn't the Taliban, it would have been someone else. If it wasn't today, it would have happened later. Basically, like, even the people, like Dylan Burns, a popular left-wing streamer, I guess, like, he said, like, who has, like, a lot of foreign policy experience, like, he stated that the Taliban was going to take over. It wasn't that, it wasn't a matter of if that was going to happen. It was if, it was when. But a lot of people speculate that it was going to be something down the line. Like, it was going to be, like, either, like, not even at, right after we took over, but, like, right after we took over, the Taliban would make their move, and then, like, there would be fighting, and things would be bad, and they'd take over then. But the way things happen now, it appears, like, I don't even know to the extent of why it happened. Like, um, I get that, like, it's, like, there seems to be a lot of conflicting whatevers about this. Like, some people are saying that this is, like, the... Afghanistan army was just too weak that they couldn't fight against them so they let them in or that the Afghanistan army has willingly let them in you see everybody putting the blame on something else you know Republicans are blaming Democrats Democrats are blaming Republicans Biden is blaming Afghanistan and Afghanistan is blaming Biden interventionists are blaming non-interventionists you know all these things are playing planning out what does this mean for a pullout Honestly, there really is nothing we can do. Like, pulling out of Afghanistan is the only option we have, literally. We could stay in Afghanistan, but there's no reason to. Is there any evidence that us staying would somehow prevent the Taliban from taking over? They kind of already have. So there's really no point in staying anymore, even more so. The only point that we have to stay is basically tying into my next part. We should help the refugees 
and allies in the area. That's the only reason that the U.S. should stay in there a little bit longer. You know, we have a lot of people who have helped the U.S. who need to get out. And we have a lot of refugees who just want to get out because they don't want to be under Taliban rule. You know, for many different reasons. Maybe they were a freedom fighter fighting against the Taliban. Or they worked for the U.S. The, the government that the U.S. implemented into Afghanistan. Or they're a woman or child who does not want to be under Taliban rule. U.S. should be doing something to help them. It's the least we could do after screwing over the country for 20 years. And the next one is who to blame. Honestly, everybody's to blame. Except for me. But the people to blame at most are the U.S. presidents who pushed for this policy. Bush gets one little extra bit of blame for starting the war. But Obama, Trump, and Biden get, like, their own, they, they, they get pray, they get their fault too, because they continued this war without actually pushing for a plan to get out. Like, Obama basically just pushed through the war and didn't expect any plan to get out, even though the campaign was like this, we need to pull out of Iraq and stuff. Trump also campaigned on that. And did, at one point, plan to get out. But he didn't have a plan to get out. But he planned to get out. He didn't, like, he didn't put pedal to the metal and actually initiate a plan to do so. And Biden clearly didn't have it either. Biden, like, that's the reason why I thought that he pushed back the deadline to, like, September 11th. Aside from, like, the self-aggrandizing speech that he was going to make, like, On this day, 20 years ago... Like, aside from that, I thought that the idea would be that he would, like, build a sort of infrastructure to pull out of the war, but instead, he is not going to do that, and instead, he is going to just continue the pullout and then blame, Af like, the Afghanistan government that he took part in building and is just going to say they're the ones at fault and not him. Even though he says in the speech, the buck stops here. He should have had a plan. That's the whole point. You're supposed to have a plan to get out. Not just get out and then not think of a plan later. That's literally like sort of like the isolationist of like the 30, like the 1930s talking. Like people, like they didn't have, they didn't have plan, like broader plans for like the worldwide political sphere or anything of the sort. Their plan was simply get out. And honestly, there isn't much else I could say about Afghanistan. I don't have faith in the government that will be obviously implemented. But we need to still remain outside of Afghanistan because the fact that, like, and this is the truth. The, like, if anything, this also proves that us staying in there was terrible because we're screwed. We've screwed ourselves. Not only is... The Taliban going to take over and lead into an obviously reactionary government in the region that hate the U.S. immensely. That also, that government is going to align with other governments that hate us, like China, who has announced that they're going to do a big infrastructure plan in the region sponsored by the Taliban. A thing that the U.S. should have been doing because, like, it's like this. You screwed over a region so hard, you have to, at the one point, be able to pick up the bricks and help put it back together. It's like World... It's like the... Like, I'll compare it to World War II versus World War I. In World War I, here's basically what happened. The U.S. punished Germany, and then left, and then left them to their own reactionary devices. But in World War II, when Europe was destroyed... The U.S. said, instead of just leaving and then just saying, oh, well, figure it out for yourself. They said, no, we're going to help you rebuild the areas in order to prevent something like that from happening. That's what the U.S. should have been doing. Now, to, granted, there is argument that they did kind of do that, but it obviously wasn't their strong suit. It was just U.S. imperialism. Anyways, that's all I got to say about Afghanistan, because... All the major talk about that has kind of went out of the window. So let's move on to Ohio, which is just like Afghanistan, according to Kennedy Cooper. I kid, I kid. But this is actually something really good. Activist Morgan Harper has entered the Democratic Senate race to challenge Tim Ryan. 
Now, for those who don't remember, Tim Ryan is an individual who ran for president in the 20, like in the 2020 election, and was the guy who Bernie did that famous I wrote the damn bill thing for. Like, Tim Ryan was like, you don't know that, Bernie. You don't know that. I do know that. Like, that thing. Tim Ryan was also, like, destroyed by Tulsi Gabbard in the debate because he was like, when the Taliban was flying to- planes into our towers, and then Tulsi Gabbard was like, the Taliban didn't invade us on 9-11. Afghan- Al-Qaeda did. Like, that, that was basically what, like, Tim Ryan is just a terrible person altogether. He tried to primary, not primary Pelosi, but, like, try to be the speaker candidate against Pelosi from the right. That didn't pan out either. Basically, he, but he's also, like, the Democrats' only hope, well, supposedly only hope to take over Ohio, and even then, he's a long shot. I was kind of wanted Nita Turner to run, but I, of course, like, given the recent thing that happened in Ohio 11, you know, maybe Nina should stay off of the election game for a little bit. And though, and I actually kind of forgot about Harper, because I didn't actually endorse Harper last time around when she ran for Congress, because the congresswoman she was running against wasn't actually that bad, all things considered. But Harper, like, what happened? Like, the con- there was a controversy surrounding her race that was very interesting. See, when Harper ran, like, when Harper first ran, there was, like, a bunch of people who were, like, mocking Harper for running. And were, like, explicitly tying the fact, like, Joyce Betty, the person she was running against, was... African American, like she's running against, like Morgan Harper is running against Af- African American representative Joyce Betty, and Morgan Harper was basically, like, um, I'm black too. However, Morgan is lighter skinned than Betty, so and then like the person like who called this out responded with, "Justice Democrats posted an image in their endorsement of you," as if that proved anything it literally just showed that he was racist because he thought that she was too light-skinned to be black and that was the big controversy that happened in that moment but Joyce Betty wasn't actually that bad of a congresswoman Tim Ryan is a bad congressman and I wouldn't support him even if you forced me to so I think Harper would be a good choice for senate it's a long shot either way like I mean she it's not like Pennsylvania it's not going to be, it's in the top 10 most likely seats to flip, but it's like way on the bottom of that list. So, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's very improbable. In case the next story is something that's going to be very controversial to a lot of people who watch this, because a lot of you are horny degenerates. <laughs> Only fans to bar sexually explicit videos starting in October. Now, originally... Like, basically, that's what, that's the news headline that popped up, and everybody flipped out, but then there were some people who were trying to do damage control over, like, oh, it's actually not that bad, like, what they're actually doing is basically trying to, like, mediate the con, like, the content that was made, but then it turns out, yeah, the headline was actually not that inaccurate. Here is the new terms of service from OnlyFans, basically saying you cannot show sexually explicit conduct which means simulating sex or simulating you know what masturbation can't show off your parts basically yeah it it is not inaccurate the reason being is that it appears that OnlyFans wants to try and raise a lot more money from advertisers and such that do not necessarily want to advertise on a site that is you know basically smut so in return they're basically like doing this to try and say like oh we're actually a good thing and a lot of people have raised like have been rightfully mad this isn't the first time this has happened to websites like this for example many people might remember the infamous tumblr thing where tumblr basically said they were going to ban a bunch of nsfw content and Tumblr basically, like, a lot of people left Tumblr because that was the only reason that they went to Tumblr to post content that they weren't allowed to post on other sites. Now, the reason why they did that was basically try and paint a new image of the site. But in actuality, that didn't help them at all. Another website that did something like this is one that you may be familiar with, 
that does a lot more explicit stuff than OnlyFans did. <laughs> Not gonna say the site because we all know what it is. The site basically decided to ban every single video that was made from an account that was not verified by the site itself in order to quell potentially harmful content that would be made. Now, again, a lot of people have been calling this, calling OnlyFans out all, like very hard because of the fact that they built their backs, like their site was built on the backs of sex workers. Like they built, they basically built the foundation that the site is used and now they're literally saying, yeah, now that we don't need you anymore, bye bye A lot of websites do this. Like, this is just this historical thing that websites do. Animators built YouTube for a long time. Now that content wasn't viable anymore, bye bye And even though it seems that the top OnlyFans creators are not going to get as affected as much because they're, like, huge, it seems that they're already thinking about moving to other sites to potentially do this. There's been a lot of talks of people either making their own website with this kind of stuff or basically trying to migrate to another website that could potentially do this. This is going to be a very long saga because OnlyFans have been a huge part of internet discourse for a while, so let's wait and see how things play out. Now, the next stories kind of tie into each other. First, there was a guy from North Carolina, very unfortunate, who went to the Capitol Hill, like right in front of the Library of Congress with his pickup truck, and then called up and said he had a bomb. Now, he, like, after like after a while of a police standoff, the police, like, got him and he went quietly. You know, very interesting that they didn't just shoot him on sight, but, you know, you know, well, you know. But this is just another instance of, like, radical right-wing violence that was not violence necessarily at this particular moment i guess technically but it's been like especially considering this is like a while after the capitol hill riots speaking of the fbi has has basically looked into the capitol hill riots and according to root reuters the fbi finds scant evidence of u.s capital attack was coordinated now this is interesting. It says scant, barely sufficient or adequate. But actually looking in the article, you start to realize, wait, did, you know what the term scant means, right? Because if you actually look into the article, it, it doesn't appear to be scant at all. Like for example, they allege that one Proud Boy leader recruited members and urged them to stockpile bulletproof vests and other military-style equipment in the weeks before the attack and on January 6th, sent members forward with a plan to split into groups and make multiple entries into the Capitol. Here's another instance. FBI investigators did find that cells of protesters, including followers of the far-right Oath Keepers and Proud Boys groups, had aimed to break into the Capitol. Uh, that's not scant at all. That, like... Like, the, what they're trying, what they say is, like, the scant part is, like, there's scant evidence that, like, Trump himself coordinated it, and it's like, uh, so? That's not the, is that the investigation? Because that's not the investigation that I'm thinking of. I'm thinking that these guys, like, like, these people planned to storm the Capitol. That, that was the, that's the thing. And that's clearly here, and that's shown by evidence that that has happened there are literal t-shirts that had the date and it's like the day of the storm and it's like you seriously going to pretend that th th this isn't this wasn't planned at any point it's because in the, 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 it seems that in the article it literally just proves it because it's like yes we do have evidence that these guys did plan to storm the capital but there's no evidence that trump himself was involved so? Okay, he wasn't involved. So what? Did I say he was? Like, I... <sighs> prevailing theory is that the right-wing, like, militia groups were the ones that, like, organized the event. But then, like, Trump was basically, like, decided to, like, do a thing where he would, like, speak in favor of them. And basically, like, whatever happens, happens. That's basically the conclusion that makes the most sense that... 
is clearly evident by just any of the investigations that have been done. But I don't know why you're saying, like, scant evidence that it was planned. Like, especially considering, like, the far right literally ran with this and just like, yep, proof, we did it. We proved that, we proved it, we, we weren't, this isn't planned. Not at all, no, no, no. <sighs> this is so dumb. Speaking of dumb, now onto the main topic of this video. We're gonna be talking about a very controversial political pundit from a while ago. They were relevant a lot a while ago, and they've kind of re-entered relevancy a little bit, but you'll see, you, you might need some refreshers on who they are. The person we're gonna be talking about is a person by the name of Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern is a very interesting person, to say the very least. I mean, I wouldn't talk about them if they weren't interesting. So let's begin with a brief biography. Lauren Southern was born June 16th, 1995 in British Columbia. Yes, she is Canadian. She briefly studied political science at the University of Fraser Valley, but left after two years. She first started becoming politically relevant in 2015. Interestingly, her first forte into politics was actually as a candidate for the Canadian Parliament in the constituency of Langley Aldergrove as a candidate of the Libertarian Party of Canada. That is weird. Like, of all the things to... You, like, I thought, actually... I, I always did think that she started out her career and then became, like, a candidate. But it actually seemed to be the other way around. Due to many things, she ended up getting last place. You know, Libertarian Party of Canada is not that popular. They're not even a popular fringe party. However, she then started posting videos on YouTube in November of that year. You see, it was kind of at like the tail end of like the time period where libertarians were at a sort of height in the like internet sphere. And this was like as Donald Trump was starting to become a lot more prominent. So Lauren Southern basically sort of started talking a lot like a Trumpite, even though she wasn't a Trumpite because she was Canadian. Like, I don't think she explicitly expressed favorability to Trump. Maybe she has. I haven't watched a lot of her videos. But she did express a lot of sentiment that Trump would agree with. She would, like, criticize Islam, and she would seemingly, like... Like, it started off seemingly like just like, oh, she's criticizing Islam. Yeah, Islam is a pretty bad thing when you think about it. When you actually look deep in Islam, radical Islamic terrorism is pretty bad. And she started criticizing radical amounts of refugees and multiculturalism. Like, it seemed like, oh, it, like at first it seemed a lot more like benign. But Lauren Southern became a lot more, like a lot less dog whistly and more megaphony as the 2016 election cycle happened. And she got a lot more explicit in her viewpoints. She, it seemed like maybe she was like somewhat center right. But then as the election cycle and a political politicization started happening a lot more, she started shifting further to the right. Especially considering she started talking to a lot of interesting people when she started working for a group called Rebel Media, which was started to be a quote-unquote global platform for the anti-Muslim ideology known as counter-jihad, and basically jumped on the anti-SJW train, which brought her into a lot of close relations with a lot of people across the political spectrum, ranging from center-left, like Chris Reagan, to basically the furthest right people you can get without explicitly being neo-Nazis like Milo Yiannopoulos. And as is the case with a lot of online creators, she's very, like, hard-hitting with her viewpoints. And a lot of them are inaccurate. For example, she wrote a book called Barbarians, How Baby Boomers, Immigrants, and Islam Screwed My Generation, and in it, she said, quote, As far as I'm concerned, Hitler was just an SJW who happened to get freaky amounts of power and actually implement his hashtag kill all Jews, the predecessor to hashtag kill all men, worldview. And 
Hitler fawned over Muslims more sycophantically than Justin Trudeau. She has also stated that Black Lives Matter is a divisive, violent movement that has fascistic tendencies that has caused more deaths in 30 years than the KKK. She asked whether or not a multicultural society would require witch doctors as medical conferences and has famously promoted the conspiracy theory of the Great Replacement. The Great Replacement, for those who don't know, is a conspiracy theory that Jews or the elites, you know, which is Jews in their mind, are basically trying to get, like, Muslims or African immigrants to come to America, or Mexican immigrants or whatever, basically any brown immigrant, to come to America and breed with all these white people to make white people disappear. And has literally made documentaries to try and push for this. Like, this is like the thing that she believes. Lauren Southern literally, like, would go on boats and, like, try to prevent refugee boats from entering Canada and other countries, like, as a way to try and show, like, I'm against the multiculturalism and blah, blah, blah. She's claimed Richard Spencer is not a white supremacist. He is a white nationalist. He believes in a white ethnostate. He doesn't believe in whites being superior. Duh. But all right then, Lauren, keep being stupid. She went to something called the Vancouver Slut Walk, which was a protest march of sexual assault survivors. And she held a protest sign that said, there is no rape culture in the West, which was torn up, and was shouting at the protesters, go to Africa and you will see real rape culture, which I find very interesting because now that I start thinking about it, it's like, wait, I remember when all this stuff was happening, anti scws would always go around like, there's no such thing as rape culture, and then they would immediately turn to like, but go to these other countries and they rape people a lot. It's like, well... I I thought there was no rape culture. What are you talking about? I guess is that's why Southern added in the West. Because her view is that the white Western nations are very interestingly like, oh, we're so superior. She's consistently tried to reject the terms like far right and all this stuff. But it was pretty obvious that's who she was. She would like constantly go against transgender people, even going so far as to go into a like place and change her gender to male like legally if i remember correctly lauren southern's a guy like like according to her well him i guess i don't want to misgender lauren southern and southern was basically one of the rising like alt-right figureheads which like i guess was to sort of show diversity like i remember when the alt-right became a thing like they were always, like, I remember they would at some points literally go like, well, the old right is so diverse. We have a woman, a gay guy, like, because it had, like, Milo and her, and it's like, well, that's stupid. They'd include a Blair White and be like, see, we got a trans person, too. Southern had eventually rose to the point of prominence where she would literally just, like, get banned from countries because her being in the country would be too much of a problem. She got banned from New Zealand and got banned from the UK and I think got banned from Australia. Maybe she didn't get banned from Australia. Maybe they just didn't let her in for a little bit. I guess that would be a ban. But the thing about the alt-right that many people don't remember is the alt-right didn't last forever. Eventually, the alt-right itself basically started to dissipate as you know, people were shifting to the left in the rise of BreadTube. Alt-right creators like her, Stefan Molyneux, and, you know, a bunch of these other people started disappearing one by one. And then eventually, on June 2nd, 2019, Southern had announced that she would leave as well. It's basically saying there was no reason for her to continue because she didn't... She, like, she grew tired of political activism. And that's one of the weird things, like, why certain creators stayed around and certain creators didn't. Like, Sargon was like a leading alt-right type person, yet he sort of stuck around, but I guess it's because he didn't like openly fit into the alt-right label, but she was basically like part of the mainstream alt-right, but someone like Nick Fuentes, who I don't think was part of that alt-right growing, but instead like joined in a little later, 
I think that, like, there are many reasons for that reason as well. But anyways, the big thing was Lauren Southern left because... It wouldn't make it didn't make sense for her to continue because the old writer pretty much died. However, one year later, Lauren Southern had announced that she had returned to YouTube and that she would continue being politically active. However, it was gonna be a bit different because she had stated that while she was gone, she had went through some sort of political awakening. She had now drifted back to the center right. She was married and had a kid now. She had moved to Australia and had even got a job with Sky News. She was a different person now. And she didn't talk about the issues that a lot of people wanted her to continue talking about. Because when she left, she was still talking about like the white genocide and the Great Replacement. Now she mostly just talks about like trans issues. Which I mean, she talked about back then, but remember, she had went from like slight dog whistle to full-on bullhorn so you can't really go back to small like she's not even at, at the point of a dog whistling anymore she literally like shifted away from that kind of talking points and as such her youtube channel started getting a bit unpopular because the because there was literally no way she could have come back the center writers who like, we're not really into this so-called, like, far-right stuff like Nick Fuentes or, like, all this other stuff. They wouldn't return to her... They wouldn't go to her videos because she has... She's a well-known white supremacist. And all of her white supremacist fans didn't care about, like, her shifting to center-right and now basically being the conservative that they didn't want her to be and it was very apparently trans like it was really transparent like the fact that she was only returning for like views or stuff because they would ask like if she got interviews like oh she's a reformed white supremacist but when they would ask lauren southern do you regret all of this past stuff that you did she would literally just no she even apparently like made a wikipedia account to try and delete the fact that she was a former white supremacist basically she wants she wants to wipe her slate clean and try and start anew but at that point there was really no route for her to return except she did manage to find a route that route being debating BreadTube. She knows that BreadTube knows who she is, but she doesn't care. All she needs is the views to like jump back into the fray, and luckily a lot of the debate bro type people will happily provide. Xander Hall, Serfs, Hunter Avalone, they will all willingly debate her because that's their content. However, the big difference is that Serfs and Xander, they wanted to debate her in a sense of like, see we'll prove that we're smarter than her we got her we got her now but hunter was stupid and thought that lauren southern was not a white supremacist like li like literally he was like getting mad at his fans for saying like you know you guys like i mean i get saying this but like lauren southern is not that bad of a person when you think about it, it's like southern's a literal nazi what are you talking about but xander hall and the serfs they basically try to debate her as like, oh yeah, we'll get her, but that's the thing about her grift. She can just pretend that she was not that. Like, Xander Hall basically wanted to get her on like, why genocide or something, like, you're like, anti-trans or something, and he's like, and she, she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she, like Xander literally just stumbled his debate and Lance was like, you know, you're, you lost that debate really hard, man. You, you stink. Lance of the Surfs, if you don't know. And that Surf's equally lost in his debate against her. And it's just like, these guys, they wanted a gotcha, but they couldn't get it because Lauren Southern doesn't care. She is such a disingenuous person that there's literally no point in trying to gotcha her in a debate. All she wants is the attention. And that's what she, what she got. She's like literally one of the most like grifty people I can think of. Because she was like, oh, I'm a libertarian. The goes like, this, like, 
Oh, you're so libertarian that you think that multiculturalism and people shouldn't be free to associate with whoever the hell they want to. You're so multi you're so libertarian. But then she's also like, oh, but not like she can't. She went to the right white supremacist and then can't even stay with the white supremacist and now has to shift at the center right because that's not popular on the internet anymore. I'm honestly really glad that uh, Southern is just basically like a political relic at this point because, like. She, all she really, like, at this point, all she really wants to do is debate, like, a really big streamer, like, Vosh, and Vosh clearly say that he won't have her on because she's just very clearly disingenuous. Like, you could pretend, like, at least other people who, like, espouse what they say believe it. Southern's clearly just, like, a fraud. Anyways, that's all I gotta say on that. Lauren Southern's a fraud? Who cares? Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when a future video might comes out. And if you need some more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, check out my articles on the Independent Political Report, or consider supporting me on Patreon.